Well, hi there, and welcome to this, the final episode in the later series, the, the first series of David Icke is a Dot Connector. I'm a very croaky Richie Allen, I'm not well at the moment, please forgive me. Um, and this is David Icke's new book, uh, The Perception Deception, fantastic book, over a thousand pages, crammed, uh, jam-packed with information um, and uh, fantastic research. David. I hope it's not catching, like Rich. I hope it isn't catching, no, because you're in serious trouble if it is. <laughs> Um, and uh, this is the final episode, yeah, episode nine. It's number nine. You've covered uh, an incredible uh, amount of stuff. And what uh, I've been doing is, is taking a journey from step to step um, with many elements to it, um, including the, the foundation, really, which is um, the fact that the world that we perceive and the world that we think we're living in is manipulated by a force beyond human sight which ancients uh, uh, called through many different names. I'm, I'm using the word archons, but I could be talking about the Christian demons and the, the Islamic jinn and, and, and many others. Um, and I've talked also about how um, there, are, there are networks of, of, of bloodlines, of particular hybrid bloodlines, which are manipulating uh, our society uh, on behalf, if you like, of this, this hidden force, this hidden hand. What I want to do today in the, uh, the, the final um, program in, the, in this first series is to take all that information and apply it to what we experience every day, what we read in the newspapers, what we see on the television news, um, because the mainstream media will say this has happened and that's happened and that's happened, but what they won't do is go connect, 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 there's the picture. So um, it's a heck of a lot of information that I'm getting across uh, in this program. And I can only scratch the surface to connect the dots, but of course elsewhere in my books and, and other places you can get the detail. Um, started out in the first program talking about the goal of this global conspiracy was to create a global fascist, communist, um, Orwellian state with a world government dictating to every part of the world, a world central bank dictating all global finance, a world single currency which would not be um, cash or multiple currencies, it would be one single electronic currency and that the implications of freedom for that are massive as I've explained in, in previous programs, a world army to impose the will of the world government and we have a de facto world army now called NATO and um, a microchip population connected to a global computer, which is all part of the transhumanist uh, agenda of putting bits of technology into the human body for reasons I've explained and the consequences I've detailed. And one of the, 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 the names I've given to this society that we're hurtling towards now, if you put the dots together, is the Hunger Games Society. And it's named after, of course, the film, The Hunger Games. This is a, uh, an image from that uh, movie. And in fact, it's a series of movies. And the Hunger Games Society uh, was a, a world in which a tiny, tiny elite, like uh, less than 1%, controlled the world through um, a vicious, police state symbolized there and, and of course there's a very transhumanist feel about those um, those people in uniform there and that the police state imposed the will of the less than one percent in, in what they call the capital the mega rich high-tech city where the, the elite lived and the rest of the population not a, a working class a, a middle class whatever the rest of the population that weren't in that less than one percent were just um, uh, used as slaves to serve the less than 1% um, uh, in, in a situation imposed by the, uh, the police state. And so how uh, do we uh, see this being brought about? Well, first of all, if you're going to put the masses, including the people well off or very well off that are not part of your less than 1%, if you're going to put them in that state of slavery, then you have to deny them and take from them any wealth. And of course, here's a David D's um, image 
David Deza, um, a, an American artist who does a lot of political art. And that really sums up how they have done it and how they uh, are continuing to do it. Um, I explained in the last Dot Connector show how the crash of 2008 was coldly manipulated by taking away the checks and balances and letting free the, the free flow of unfettered greed run riot and, and create the crash. And what happened then, um, and this picture just brilliantly symbolizes it, is there was probably the biggest transfer of wealth in human history, known human history, from the people through governments to the banks. Um, therefore, the less than 1%. And when they uh, began the second phase in Cyprus, by not just um, going from uh, the people through governments to the banks, but actually what they now call bail-ins, which is literally just going to the bank accounts of people and taking the money. Now, once you can do that, and these bail-ins are becoming more and more uh, prevalent, you can go to people, as, what, as happened in Cyprus, you can go to the bank accounts of people who currently think they're well off and, and, and prosperous and okay and it's not my problem, and you can make sure it is their problem overnight. Um, and if we look at this next image, this is um, <laughs> just sums up what I'm talking about. This is um, income for 2010, and it's worse now, the disparity, in the United States. And look at it. Where's the middle class even today, Rich? You know, you're going from people with nothing, and then it, it doesn't rise that significantly at all, then suddenly, whoosh, that's the Hunger Games less than 1% that we're talking about. And if we go to the next uh, graph, this is net property wealth in the United Kingdom. Same story. Again, nothing, then, you know, relatively not, not a lot more, and then whoosh, up it goes again. So when we're talking about the Hunger Games Society, as I have been for so long, and this is what they, you know, I've just described the structure they want, it's not only going to happen, it is happening. Look at it. So if we... Um, then look at uh, the ways that this is being uh, brought about um, on top of stealing wealth from people. We come to something called Agenda 21, which is Agenda for the 21st century. And Agenda 21 um, goes along with something called Sustainable Development and Biodiversity. And these three things together, they're actually one, one agenda, um, are being used as an excuse to transform human society. This, uh, this image, again, um, the David D's image, um, sums up what I'm talking about. And that TPP there, the Trans-Pacific Partnership, is one of the so-called free trade agreements and partnership agreements which are giving more and more power to corporations over governments. So corporations can sue governments if governments do things that the corporations don't like. And Agenda 21 was established at the 1992 Earth Summit in Brazil, and that was headed by a, a, a Rothschild Rockefeller gopher, an oil billionaire, a Canadian bloke called Maurice Strong. And he... Um, has been a front man for this. He's, he's on the run in China now, but he, he's been a front man for a long time for this. And he said in his support of Agenda 21, um, all those uh, decades ago, isn't the only hope for this planet that the industrialized civilization collapse? Isn't it our responsibility to bring this about? And what he's talking about is what this Agenda 21 and its advocates talk about in their documents, which is the post-democratic, post-industrial society. This is the society of Agenda 21. So um, let's, um, let's just look here. There's a, just quoting from the Perception Deception here. Uh, what the Agenda 21 documents, which is being orchestrated through the United Nations, this stalking horse for world government and centralized global dictatorship, what does it want? It um, its demands include 
um, central control of all land, all private property, centrally controlled, no private property, all water sources and distribution. You see how we talked in, in the Dock Connector shows about how um, uh, authorities are now saying we own all the water, including the puddles when the rain uh, uh, falls. You can collect water and all of that. Yep. Um, all energy supplies controlled centrally and distribution of all food um, uh, and production of all food. And what, what have I said in these uh, Dot Connector shows? If, if you control the food, then the only access to food is if you do as I say. You control the water, the only access to water is if you do what I say. So let's go through this quick list um, of Agenda 21. And if, if, if people want to put it into a search engine, they'll find a fantastic amount of information exposing this. They want an end to national sovereignty. This is what's happening, of course, in Europe, in the European Union. They want that to happen all over the world. State planning and management of all land resources, ecosystems, deserts, forests, mountains, oceans, and fresh water, agriculture, rural development, biotechnology, and ensuring equity. That means equal slavery. The state to define the role of business and financial resources. In, in other words, control all business and anything that happens financially. Ab abolition of private property, because they say it's not sustainable. Uh, restructuring the family unit. And of course, you know, I've, I've, I've talked in my books for years and in the Dot Connecting shows and, 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 and the paper reviews on your show about how wherever you look at social engineering, whatever angle it comes from, the family unit is the target because they want to break up um, that unity and they want to get control of the children. Oh, synchronicity. The next one is children raised by the state. People told what their job will be. Major restrictions on movement. Creation of human settlement zones. Um, getting people off the land and putting them in densely populated human settlement zones. I'll get to that as we go along here. Mass resettlement of people as they are forced to vacate land that they currently live, uh, where they currently live. Dumbing down education, brackets, achieved. Mass global depopulation in pursuit of all of the above. And it's being orchestrated through the United Nations and an organization uh, called uh, the International Council of Local Environmental Initiatives. Um, which, uh, that was its first name, now it's known as Local Governments for Sustainability uh, uh, and um, what that local part of it is, is Agenda 21 and the Orwellian state is about controlling people right down into the fine detail of their lives, wherever they may live. So you've got to get um, the control system into the, the locality, into the local authorities, and that's why Agenda 21 is local authority based and altogether becomes a, a, a global network. Also, did you know, I, I, I bet very few people did, that um, from 2005 uh, to 2015, it's the decade of Education for Sustainable Development, or ESD. And uh, as I've said here, put, an, put, put another way, the decade of mass controlling our kids to be good little slaves. This is one statement um, in, in relation to this um, programming of children to accept the, the society that I'm talking about. The decade of ESD um, is far-reaching and complex uh, undertaking that potentially touches on every aspect of life. The basic vision is a world where everyone learns the values, behavior, and lifestyles required for a sustainable future. Watch that word. Sustainable fa sounds great because it means you don't use more than can be replenished, but that's not the use of the word. It's Orwell an Orwellian use of the word, an inversion of the use of the word. For a sustainable future and for positive societal transformation. In other words, transforming society into the vision of Agenda 21. And talking about there the dumbing down of education, this is another quote from the, uh, these documents. Generally, more highly educated people who have higher incomes can consume more resources than poorly educated people who tend to have lower incomes. Here's the line. In this case, more education increases the threat to sustainability. And, and that's come out of uh, UNESCO, which of course was created, and the first director of it, um, uh, was um, eugenicist Julian Huxley, the brother of Aldous Huxley, who wrote Brave New World, not from imagination, but from um, 
knowledge of what was coming, just as Orwell did with 1984. So, how do you transform society? You've got to have excuses for it, and you've got to get people off the land. Enter this man, Al Gore, with his nonsense about uh, global warming until it stopped getting uh, warmer, uh, which became suddenly human uh, cause climate change. This, this man, Al Gore, um, was vice president to Bill Clinton, right? If you're anywhere close to Bill Clinton, your connection to the truth is, uh, you know, <laughs> purely uh, coincidental. Tenuous, to say the least. And he's got what they call a carbon footprint, the size of bloody Godzilla, him, when you see his bloody lifestyle, because he knows it's all a nonsense. And, and notice, too, that it was Al Gore, the, 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 the guy who was the high priest of the climate cult, and then when it was exposed, that big exposure, that the so-called climate scientists were fixing the data to make it look like warming was happening when it wasn't, he's already been heard of um, ever since, if, if you, uh, if you uh, notice. So let's go, let, let's look at this manipulation, because global warming and human caused climate change. These are the, the engine that's the, the engines that are driving this transformation of society and the excuses for it. So let's look at this graph here. This was known as the hockey stick, right? And it was total fabrication. What they announced, these, you know, you can trust them climate scientists supporting this nonsense, was that this is the graph of um, the Earth's temperature. And you get to, um, into the 19th, 20th century when there was a lot more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, that, you know, they, they, they pointed out, and suddenly, whoosh, look at it, hence the, yeah. the hockey stick. Now, this has been absolutely discredited. And look at this next graph which is um, what they didn't want you to know. One of the things that came out when the scientists were exposed for fixing the data is that they were desperate to lose what is known as the medieval warm period. Now, look at the, look, we're talking 100 AD uh, uh, up to, well, up to, uh, what is it, 700, 800 years ago. And you had this massive warm period when the Vikings colonized Greenland because they had ice-free seas. And, uh, and it, it was, a, for many, many people, it was a time of abundance because of the, of, of the, of the, the temperatures. Temperatures much higher than they are today. And what they had to do to, to play this scam was to lose that medieval warm period as if it didn't exist, hence the hockey stick, which uh, uh, made out it never happened. But then you go to the Little Ice Age. And what happened then, remember, you know, all the... Um, the pictures you have on um, Christmas cards of people uh, in, in kind of Victorian times and, and earlier uh, skating on the Thames because it was so frozen. They used to have ice yeah, fairs yeah. on the Thames. That was the little ice age, as they called it, when it got very, very cold. And the reason it got very cold, here we go, is because of the uh, almost non-existent sunspot activity in the sun. And these climate idiots actually ignore the sun as part of, uh, indeed, the, the, the very basis of what changes temperature and dictates temperature. So as a result, um, when they've said, as in, in the 20th, 20th century temperatures, this is the hottest it's been since records began, those records began in the Little Ice Age. Of course it's going to be higher now than it, 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 it was, um, was then. So um, we'll come back in a second. To, um, to have a look at the truth of what has happened to the Earth's temperature in the last few years when we're supposed to be in this uh, global warming nightmare. Great stuff, David. And we will take a very quick break now. We'll be back with the second part of Dot Connector after this. Now, welcome back to the final episode in this series of The Dot Connector with David Icke. This is The Perception Deception, and it's available on davidicke.com. There's also an e-book version uh, available of it as well. Great stuff, David. Climates, temperatures. Let, yeah, let's pick up then from where we, we, we've been in that little ice age yeah. back in Victorian times and, and before. 
And, um, and let's look at the, the reality of temperature rises in this period when global warming became climate change. Why did global warming become climate change? Because global warming became unsustainable because it wasn't warming. Here's a graph that shows the temperature rises, or lack of them, since 1997. 1997 it was to uh, 2012, and it's gone on to present time. That is the truth. So when people say, oh, yeah, you know this extreme weather, it, 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 it's climate change, because that's what happens when the temperature warms. It ain't warming, so how can it uh, uh, be? And um, this is the, the truth about what's happening. Now, if we go to this next graph. Now, these are greenhouse gases, right? Now, if you listen to the propaganda, uh, CO2, carbon dioxide, is the one on the far left, right? Got to be. The propaganda wouldn't be what it is about CO2, without which we wouldn't be here, by the way. Let's take something we need for the, for, to survive and, and then let's demonize it. Do you know what that graph is on the left of greenhouse gases? It is water vapor and clouds. So let's demonize condensation, shall we? I mean, let's demonize clouds. That's the truth. And not only that, the gray part is naturally occurring uh, greenhouse uh, gas uh, in their various forms, gases in their various forms. The green bit, and notice on the CO2, it's just a sliver, yeah. the green bit. Yeah. That's the only bit that comes from yeah. humans. All the rest uh, comes from uh, a, a natural um, state of um, CO2 production. I mean, it is insane that what is being suggested. So let's, um, let's look at um, Agenda 21 uh, um, in, 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 in more detail and the, the way that it's um, being driven by human-caused uh, climate change, as is alleged. And also let's look at uh, a quote from, uh, or listen to a quote from a scientist um, who was there on the gravy train but then realized what a nonsense it was. Here's another David Dee's um, image, which uh, again brilliantly summarizes um, the stalking horse to fascism and uh, well, fascism, communism, the different expressions of the same thing anyway, um, that, that Agenda 21 is. Um, and while we look at that, I'll give you a quote from David Evans. He's an engineer and former consultant for the Australian Greenhouse Office, now called the Department of Climate Change. And he said, that global warming, um, or the global warming debate, has reached ridiculous proportions and is full of micro-thin half-truths and misunderstandings. I am a scientist who was on the carbon gravy train, understands the evidence, was once an alarmist, but am now a skeptic, he said. The whole idea that carbon dioxide is the main cause of recent global warming, as it was when he was quoted, is uh, based on a guess that was proved false by empirical evidence during the 1990s. This is an important quote. But the gravy train was too big with too many jobs, industries, trading profits, political careers, here we go, and the possibility of world government and total control riding on the outcome. So rather than admit they were wrong, the governments and their tame climate scientists now outrageously maintain the, the, the fiction that carbon dioxide is a dangerous pollutant. So. One of the great um, uh, parts of this agenda is to get people off the land and into these, what it calls in its documents, human settlement zones, where people are uh, put into this, these densely populated micro units. I'll give you an example later on uh, as we go along. But what I want you to look at now, uh, to, just to show that you know, this is not being made up, is a map of the United States, and then I'll explain what it means. This is a simulated reserve and corridor system to protect biodiversity. Biodiversity, Agenda 21, sustainability. As required by the UN Convention on Biological Diversity Wildlands Project, UN and US uh, Man and Biosphere programs and World Heritage program as a vital step to attaining, here we go, sustainable development. And in fact, this map, for reasons I'm going to explain, 
was used in the United States Senate to stop the ratification uh, at the, of the United Nations Convention on uh, Biological Diversity by the United States when, when, when uh, senators saw this map and what, and what it means. But what has happened, even though the United States has not signed up to it and ratified it, it's still pushing the agenda uh, on in the United States anyway. Now, you see the red areas in America. These are, quote, core reserves and corridors, little to no human use. Look at the number of people that live in those red areas enormous, currently enormous that are designated not to live there enormous, in, yeah. in, in relation to Agenda 21. Then you've got the yellow bits. Look how big they are. Yeah. They are buffer zones, highly regulated human use. And then you see the green. Can you see the green in there just yeah. a little bit? D don't confuse the, uh, the, the blue with, 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 you know, lakes and stuff. The green, they're, they're just dotted here and there. They are for normal human use, and they are going to be the locations, a lot of them anyway, for these human settlement uh, zones. And what they're doing is they're forcing people off the land um, by financially destroying uh, rural communities uh, through increased regulations, fines, uh, etc., changing zoning laws, compulsory purchase, closing on a vast scale of the United States rural roads, which make living in rural areas impossible. And they are also um, uh, getting farmers off the land because they want the farmers because they're off the land so the corporations can take over by making farming so difficult financially and through endless regulations and also by forcing them and I'm not kidding to kill their animals if we um, uh, look, look, look at uh, uh, examples here that, that, that are in the perception deception where farmers um, uh, who, who are legally farming uh, certain breeds of animals and then some idiot um, in administration uh, decides through Agenda 21, actually, um, we're banning the farming of those animals because of this regulation and this regulation and that regulation. So what they then do is they send the feds in and if they don't kill their animals, the, the certain breed of animals, then the feds do it. And as a result, they are destroying diversity in terms of um, animal species, just as they are systematically destroying diversity of um, seed types. So they can create a situation where they control the animals that are allowed and the breeding of them, and they control the seed types through uh, organizations like Monsanto. Here's a quote. In the past 15 years, 190 breeds of farm animals have gone extinct worldwide. There are currently 1,500 uh, others at risk of being wiped out. Within the last 10 years alone, 60 breeds of cattle, goats, pigs, horses and poultry have become extinct. And um, there's a story uh, here that I, I, I highlight in the Perception Deception where one farmer uh, in, uh, in Michigan had to shoot all his pigs, including piglets, um, uh, when the Michigan Department of Natural Resources were on their way to arrest them, to arrest him if they were still alive when they got there. So there's so many ways of clearing the land. And one of the major ones that we're seeing unfold now is by, I would strongly suggest, the creation of extreme weather, which makes farming impossible, whether it's floods or whether it's uh, drought and drives people from the land because they simply cannot farm um, anymore. And that brings me to this, this little place called HARP, High Frequency Active Auroral Research Program. It's in Alaska. And people focus on HARP, and, and yes, they should, but there are increasing HARPs around the world now. It's not just the one in Alaska where it seems to have started out. And this is controlled by DARPA. This is the technological development arm of the Pentagon and one of the most sinister organizations on planet Earth. And what HARP does is it fires high-powered radio waves into the ionosphere, in the upper atmosphere, and starts the ionosphere to vibrate. 
And that vibration increases massively the power of the radio waves when they are reflected back to Earth. And they can, can uh, manipulate the weather, piece of cake, and they can cause earthquakes in more extreme situations. And a guy called Dr. Bernard Eastland, um, who wrote uh, some of the patents for the harp technology, actually said before he died that harp technology can manipulate the weather uh, not least by moving the jet stream. Now, let's have a look at this next picture. This is a, a weatherman um, explaining extremes of weather in Britain in the last few years. Um, the, 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 we've had the floods, of course, and we've had the, the droughts. And also we've had that um, situation in America. And um, again and again, every time, year after year, as these extreme weathers have unfolded, the, the experts have said it's because the jet stream, this, this uh, stream that brings the weather from uh, um, west to east, um, has moved and it is acting strangely and is in a different position to where it should be. And what did I just say? The person that wrote many of the patents for HARP said that it that could manipulate the weather, not least by manipulating the jet stream. A coincidence? You are having a laugh. So what has been the outcome of manipulating the jet stream? Let's look at this picture now. This is the 2013 uh, drought in the United States. And of course, in California, as we speak, they're having a, a, a major drought. What did that do? What is the one in California doing now? Indeed, it's in the news as we speak. It is devastating farmers, independent small farmers that don't have the ability to ride these situations like the corporations do. They're forced off the land and thus um, in come the corporations and the food chain is controlled ever more powerfully and more people are forced into the cities uh, which are designed to be these uh, human settlement zones. Now there's a drought but any extreme of weather is uh, possible with harp. So let's look at these pictures. This is uh, in, 19, in uh, 2011 when if you remember the Mississippi and the Missouri uh, were in, in uh, a flood situation. And what happened, if you remember, is the Army Corps of Engineers blew some levees because they said we have to or, or it will be terrible further down the river. And as a result of blowing those levees, they destroyed uh, farmland on a massive, massive scale. Um, uh, most of it run by small family farms like this. And you know, three weeks after they did this, the federal government uh, wrote to the owners of these flooded farms offering to buy them through the Army Corps of Engineers that blew um, the levees. Get people off the land. And um, if you remember, in one of the Dot Connecting shows, I uh, mentioned a, a guy called Dr. Richard Day, a Rockefeller insider who predicted in 1969 how the world would change, and it absolutely has in, in, in fine detail. And one of the things he said was, the weather will be modified and used as a weapon of war to create drought or famine. So let's look at the next picture. <laughs> Apart from different architecture, it's exactly the same scene, same and scene. this is the British floods <clears throat> this year, which have devastated yeah, summer, summer rural century. communities and devastated, here we go again, independent farmers and their ability to function and survive. Also happening in, in, in Britain and, and indeed in, in America and elsewhere. We're having services to rural communities taken away. You know, in America, one of the things they've done is taken out the slip roads from, from um, the... the um, the freeways in rural areas so that um, people aren't coming off the freeways and, and you know, spending money in, in cafes and, and, and such like in these rural communities. Bypass. They're going on to, yeah. to, to the corporations in, in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of the desert where you get McDonald's and Burger King and all these things. It's all part of destroying rural communities and getting them, getting them off uh, the land. And, and you know because of the interview you, you did with a guy called Richard North, uh, a guy who saw documentation of the European Union when he was there, that 
Um, this is in the, uh, I think this is in the Somerset Levels, which has been devastated by floods uh, uh, in recent uh, uh, months. And uh, he said that the reason that the rivers weren't dredged for years, uh, as they would have been to, to, to prevent stuff like this, or mitigate it anyway, was because the European Union had designated this whole area to go back to nature without telling the people living there. So don't uh, dredge the rivers, let them flood, let this situation uh, occur, and then what happens? You get people off the land. Now, let's look at this map of America. This is a map of the proposed mega regions of the United States, and it's planned to happen all over the world, where you concentrate populations in certain areas and you keep them off the rest of the land, basically. And that um, organization there, America 2050, 2050 is really the, when they want this transformation to be uh, well in place. That's a Rockefeller-funded um, organization. And what's interesting, is when you um, take this map and you look at the next one, which is a map of um, high-speed rail development in America, they fit over the mega regions. And one of the um, kind of themes of the Hunger Games movie was that they got the people from the uh, the the the, the, the human settlement zones into the capital on these high-speed trains. And the idea is that they would link these human settlement zones with high-speed trains. And uh, it, within the human settlement zones, they would have all these transit systems, no cars or anything like that. And it's, uh, it's funny that, you know, in America, since the invention of the, uh, the aircraft, um, basically, the railways, apart from commuters and, and, and big, those big goods trains here and there, they've just been left to go. Yet suddenly, Obama has announced massive investment in um, American rail systems, high-speed rail systems. And, you know, in this country, this uh, high-speed railway uh, uh, system of, of lines that's being pushed by the current uh, government called HS2, that's all part of this. And, you know, I know, I know this for a fact that um, not only is this happening too in Europe, this, this high-speed train uh, network thing that's being built, but some people who are, quote, railway executives actually work for NATO. I know that as a fact. And, and it's all part of this development of this uh, society, um, this Agenda 21 society. David, thank you very much. That's great stuff. We're going to take a very quick break. When we come back, We'll have the final part of, the, of, of this series of David Icke, The Dot Connector. Back in a minute. And welcome back to the final um, part of the uh, final episode of this series of Dot Connector with David Icke. Remember, go to thepeoplesvoice.tv or even go to davidicke.com to catch previous episodes. David. Well, let's look at um, in a little bit more detail of what's planned in terms of these human settlement zones. This is a, a very symbolic image from a movie called Equilibrium, which was um, one of endless uh, movies in recent years um, that has symbolized the very society that I'm talking about. And it's all about um, programming the subconscious to to, to um, become used to this uh, kind of society and almost be subconsciously familiar with it as it unfolds in front of your, your conscious mind. And uh, it, this is uh, kind of symbolizing the high-rise human settlement zones, people densely populated in what are called micro-units. That's the Agenda 21 term. And of course, in these human settlement zones, and really are micro-units, as you'll see in a second, then people will have no problem being under 24-hour surveillance, uh, under total control. If they eat or drink um, or whatever, that's all being supplied from outside. So you do as we say or, or you don't get it. And let's look at this next image to give you a feel of what I'm talking about. These are micro units that are being built in New York. They are 30 feet by 10 feet and they have um, uh, 300 square feet. They were announced by the uh, outgoing mayor of New York, Mayor um, Bloomberg, 
And his one townhouse, which is one of many, many houses and mansions he has around the world, um, is um, 12,500 square feet. And I don't think that he will be in a micro unit. Yeah. Um, and uh, what they're doing in New York is they're building as a first initial phase 165,000 units that eliminate the use of cars and insist that they must be replaced by walking, cycling and mass transit systems exactly in line with Agenda 21. And look at it. These 165,000 units are 30 feet by 10 feet and they expect people to live in them except that that is absolutely in line with agenda 21 and it's not only in new york that this is happening and in other parts of the world in california for instance and other parts of the world they are changing the building regulations so that you have to build smaller and smaller uh, homes uh, for people if we go to the next uh, <coughs> image this will bring us to another part of agenda 21 which is Frankenstein food and using food, uh, genetically modified food, to genetically modify the human species. To use food additives and drink additives and water additives like fluoride to um, rewire the human brain and to dumb it down just in the way that they uh, are using education to dumb down people because they don't want sharp thinking, free thinking people who are able to see what is being uh, exposed uh, here. And, and they're also talking about putting substances in the water now that will make people feel happy. Um, you know, it's like um, Older Suxley talked about, enjoy your servitude. It's all part of it. Drugging the population is part of it. And uh, it, Monsanto, if we go to the next one, um, is at the forefront, of course, of genetically modified uh, food. And it, this is just an example of the archontic corporations, as I would call them, uh, in relation to what I've said in previous Dot Connecting shows, following uh, the agenda. And, and it's a very good um, symbolic picture, this, with, with children and um, adults too, but particularly children, being used like laboratory animals to turn them into... Uh, good little slaves or do, do just whatever they're told without questioning. That's the idea. And, um, and the children are being uh, rewired genetically through uh, so many means, not least the food, the crap that passes for food in uh, the world of Agenda 21. Now, one of the things that um, we uh, have talked about in, um, in, in various shows is, is how um, people now are being offered the opportunity to take drugs which uh, have edible microchips which then tell you or tell the doctor, in the end tell the authorities, whether you have had your latest dose or not. And in that movie Equilibrium, it's interesting because you know, you've only got to look at these movies, they're telling you what's happening because they're, they're programming the subconscious. That there was this police state which fiercely imposed itself on a, on a slave population. And people had to take drugs, including the strata that ran the police state. They had to take drugs several times a day to suppress their emotion. You know, so they could be like the psychopaths we're seeing increasingly um, emerging in law enforcement all over the world. And if they didn't take the drugs to suppress their emotion, then the authorities knew about it because of a technological system of showing them. Now, just have a look at this. This is um, what they're suggesting now. Talk about stepping stones, the totalitarian tiptoe. How it works. Patient takes pill, which has been modified to contain edible microchip. After pill is swallowed, sh uh, chip is activated by stomach fluids, sending a signal to a patch on the arm. Uh, patch contains receiver, which decodes data about the drug. Receiver transmits information to mobile, telling patient when the next dose is due, and provides other health data. Telling patient, actually the idea is telling authorities when the next um, dose is due. And also part of it in this, uh, this following image um, is vaccinations. Um, Big Pharma, the pharmaceutical cartel, is absolutely uh, an arm of this uh, global cabal behind this. 
And what they are embarked upon is a war on the human immune system. And when you look at the number of vaccines and combinations of vaccines now that children before the age of two are subjected to, they will never have an immune system. The immune system, for goodness sake, is still developing when it's hit by this tidal wave of, 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 of toxic trash. Um, it will never be what it would have been if left to its own devices. And the other thing about vaccines is get old people to have them. Tell them it's about flu or whatever, and then you can cull what people like Kissinger call the useless um, eaters. But there's... Um, uh, another major aspect uh, to this, which you can, you can see unfolding uh, day after day after day, and that's the technological control system, which is sold to us as, isn't it great? You want a smartphone? You want a smart TV? You have a smart meter. It's all um, sold to us as a good thing, because, of course, if they're going to sell us a nightmare, they can't tell us it's a nightmare. They have to sell us it's wonderful. Um, but it's not. And um, this image symbolizes the grid and the way it's supposed to work. Um, smart grids, they're called, or in the end, a smart grid, a global smart grid. And what it is, it's anything that says smart in front of it, and much that doesn't, um, is designed to be part of this smart grid. So we have smart phones, we have smart meters, we have smart televisions that can actually um, film us um, it, while, we're, while we're watching. We even have smart cities. Um, th those, uh, those drugs where, where you, you know, you're told um, that your next dose is due, they're called smart drugs. Um, and all this, anything with smart in front of it is part of this agenda. And the idea is, that the phones, the phone masts, and all these different forms of technology, the um, smart meters with their radiation, Wi-Fi type radiation fields in every home and business, which not only carry information from you to the authorities, but information coming back within the uh, brainwave um, frequency to, to give you uh, perceptions and, and, and thoughts that you think of your own when they're not, all this is uh, designed to come together as one gigantic control grid um, dictating the information in the energetic field at the level of the atmosphere that we live our lives in. And crucial to that is something called transhumanism, which we'll see here in this magazine article. Transhumanism is introducing technology to the human body, which is a biological computer. That's why um, technology can interface with it. And, you know, the, 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 the um, totalitarian tiptoe of introducing it, you can see things like Google Glass and all, all these technologies that are basically interacting the, uh, with, with the body. You see this idea of uh, putting microchips into people so that they can... Um, make their computer work purely by using their mind. All this is part of it because the idea is to so dehumanize people, to so disconnect them from their greater infinite consciousness that you isolate them in such a narrow band of perception that they are little more than computer terminals on a controlled internet. And uh, that's what it's part of. And what they say is, oh, no, this transhumanism, it's to, it's to make the superhuman being. So look at the next picture. Um, this is the superhuman being they want to create uh, through transhumanism and technology. Super soldiers with amazing strength and ability. Even a robot army without any humanity or, or human input whatsoever. So that humans are controlled by machines, just like we saw symbolized um, in the Matrix uh, movies. They're the ones that will become the superhuman beings. The... the, the uh, the police state control system and the, the, the elite, not the masses who are designed to be slaves. They're going to be uh, left to what they are. Um, what, um, what we are looking at, I would suggest, is an effort to create a complete sub-reality based on technology whereby, um, and I, I would suggest that's the real bottom line reason for the internet, 
Um, it's to create a technological collective mind for humanity, which humanity will be connected to through technology and even through focus if it's, if it's, um, if it's um, extreme enough. Um, and, and that collective mind will then feed to its connected parts, i.e. the human brain, what the, those controlling that technological collective mind, the internet, uh, dictate um, they should be. This, this, this image um, sim symbolizes what I'm talking about, where humans become just a computer terminal on this technologically generated matrix uh, based on the internet being the collective technological mind. And we as human beings will no longer uh, have the potential to be free thinking um, people who can work things out, who can expand their minds into their greater infinite awareness, but will be locked into a control grid in which every thought will be technologically generated from a control um, system. Um, and there's one thing uh, that I'll, I'll, I'll mention which kind of uh, brings some of these um, other things together. I've talked about these archontic entities which in their prime form are just energy. They are energetic uh, awareness and they take the form um, on one level of electromagnetic um, entities. And they cannot operate within our frequency of visible light, which we can, the only narrow band that we can decode into what we think is the world, because they're operating on a different frequency. It's two radio stations, the television stations can't connect. Um, and so they can't come into this reality. This is why they have these hybrid bloodlines I've talked about, to represent them here and do their bidding. They can't come in here because they're incompatible in frequency terms, but also in atmospheric terms. But what they want to do is change the frequency, which they can do once they have a technological control of the energy field, which is the, what I'm talking about here, and they can change the atmosphere. In fact, they can't just change the atmosphere as a, they can in the future change the atmosphere, they're changing it now. And that's what this is all about, this next image. The way that, think Fukushima, think the fact that the technological radiation in our atmosphere has increased millions of times in the last 50 years. Think that uh, there are Fukushimas all over the world, in country after country after country, all of them potential Fukushimas in terms of their impact on the radiation pollution of oceans and the radiation pollution of um, the atmosphere. So what we're looking at, and geoengineering and the chemtrails, and uh, again, uh, the chemtrails, uh, when, they, when they admit to geoengineering, it's to protect the, the planet from what? Global warming, the same uh, excuse. And what we're um, looking at is um, a situation where some people are being um, genetically modified to be able to survive in a much more radiated atmosphere. And they will be the slaves of the, the world of Agenda 21. And those that will not be able to survive uh, uh, the increased, vastly increased radiation, which they are planning beyond anything we've seen so far, they will simply not be able to survive and away they'll go. Um, and what we're looking at um, is, as I've said many times, we're looking at a death cult. These are contic entities, as I've explained in detail in the books, feed off low vibrational human energy, uh, emotional energy, all surrounding the base um, state of fear, and they feed off death. That's why they're killing the planet. That's why they're killing the atmosphere. That's why they're killing everything. People say, why, why, would, um, why would these people kill their own planet? Well, the, 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 the hybrids are just middle men and women playing a role to bring about an outcome of transforming this planet, this reality, from something that's about life and about vibrance uh, into something that's about death and destruction. And look at it. Look at it. What do we see? What do we see more and more, whether it's bombs from the sky or destruction of rainforests, 
and, and destruction of the atmosphere. We see um, a planet being um, systematically dismantled. Now, what are we going to do about it? Uh, if we're going to do anything about it, um, are we going to say that Ike's mad and it's all rubbish and exaggeration? Well, don't do anything then. And then you'll see it's not rubbish at all. Are we ending on that? I thought I would end on this. Um, it's a quote um, which really does encapsulate. I don't know where the quote came from. I just, it was just posted on my website. The government does not want us to expand our consciousness. Why? Because we would see it. Whoa, I get it now. And I also get that I'm infinite awareness with infinite power to change this crap. So the government doesn't want us to expand our consciousness. If we begin to recognize that we are powerful souls that create our reality, and they know that, that's why they're manipulating our sense of reality so that we will create through that our experienced reality. If we begin to recognize that we are powerful souls that create our reality, it will take away their power to enslave us. Yes! This is why there is fluoride in the water, chemtrails in the sky, reflecting harp energy to affect our minds, which harp can, if it's on the right frequency of brainwave activity. Aspartame in our food that re uh, rewires uh, the brain and suppresses um, thought and genetically modified organisms. This is why we are bombarded with distractions to keep our minds occupied with things that don't matter. They don't want us to think at all. And I spent the last 25 years dedicating my life, in, 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 in certainly in the last 10 years, virtually every minute of it, to exposing this. Because if, if people don't know this is, this is what's happening, and, and, and if they do and they don't do anything about it, then this is going to unfold. Let's not, it is unfolding all the time while we're watching. This is why I write the books. This is why I've, I've done what I've done. And this is why the people's voice exists. The people's voice exists so that this information can go out televisually to anyone that wants to see it when they, it wouldn't have done before. How many people want that to continue? How many people want this information to go out to as many people as possible so we have the potential of doing something about it? We'll see what happens to the people's voice, and then we'll get our answer. David, congratulations on a great series. <clears throat> My voice is finally gone. Um, don't forget the Perception Deception is available on davidike.com. Um, we'll see you in the near future with another series of The Dot Connector with David Icke. Bye for now.